Hey everyone, Noon here with another Citizen Pass vlog. Um, this is part two of one we've done already. We were having a look at this one. The uh, Manchester City Supporters Club Handbook from 73-74. Uh, so if, if you've not looked at part one or checked out part one, please have a look back at part one. This is part two, looking back at uh, magazine and some things of interest in it. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. If you're not subscribed yet to the Citizen Vlog, please tell your friends all about us and please push that old subscribe button over there somewhere. Push those bell notifications so you know when these little vlogs are coming out. And again, my apologies. I'm recording on various equipment at the moment. I'll save up for a new laptop. So uh, I'm using my phone or my, uh, at the moment I'm recording this on a tablet. So some, some days it's good, some days the quality is not so great and the, the audio lags, etc. So please bear with me while I, I save some pennies up and get you some decent stuff in the future. Anyway, yeah, let's have a look at this one. Second part of this one. We finished the last one with a quick look at an advert for Fred Air Station, didn't we? Yeah, obviously very popular. I've not heard of not seen I've not heard Fred on the radio for a long time. I might be on the wrong channel, I don't know, but I used to love listening to Fred Air after the city matches, you know, the away matches especially and driving home from the home games obviously. Um so it was uh, interesting to know how Fred's doing these days. Uh, yeah, the, obviously it's a post club magazine. You've got Middleton, that's uh, Middleton B. Any of you guys still around? Or do you know these guys on that picture there in 1972-ish? Uh, they were the runners-up in the Radio Manchester Sports Quiz. Runners-up, always a bridesmaids, lads, never mind. Brookhouse Hotel, I used to live in Withington, obviously, so I uh, used to walk past that on Wilmslow Road many times on the... Oh, I used to make regular trips to the doctors. I was a poor, I was a poorly young man as a teenager. I always get chest infections. I sort of grew out of them, but uh, I always used to get chest infections. So I remember the Brookhouse. Is that still there? I don't know. I've not been down there for a long, long time, for many years. Um, Tony Buck enjoying himself there with one of the Miss Manchester Cities. An Easter bonnet competition there with some ladies. You've got Jean Potts from Davy Hume, Tony Buck, Audrey Henderson from Longsight, Bernard Halford. And Joan Roberts from Duckingfield. So these wonderful ladies, not been with us anymore, but obviously 40, 50 years ago. No, prob probably not, but uh, if you do know any of them or you're related or, or know of them, it's great. Obviously, darts and crib features, a bit typical sort of uh, support club stuff, isn't it? Darts and crib features. And we've got a couple of players actually in action. This is a game between City and Sunderland in FA Cup fifth round match from the season before, which is. Uh, Ended in, uh, it didn't end very well, did it? I think it went to a replay, that one. It's a game I'm thinking about. Got a couple of players there. But, uh, do you know the players? Can you recognise the players? Yeah. Interestingly enough, the Sunderland player would go on to play for City as well. So, yeah, two players there. Can you know, name them? One of them's easy, isn't it? But, uh, Interesting. Let me know in those two players. Uh, one stop records. Uh, one stop records selection. The best quality of classics, jazz or pop. Yeah, clothing manufacturers, J. Ellis and Company Limited. Some great images on there. Some match images here. There's one at the top. Do you know that player at the top there who's in action? Playing against Wolves. Do you remember his name? And at the bottom, you've got. Um, Francis Lee in action against Birmingham there, obviously in a tussle with the goalkeeper. Yeah, I mean they've got some, uh, some, some, not many action pictures, but they've got quite, a, quite a few uh, action pictures. Uh, first impressions, uh, obviously J. B. Halford, better known as Bernard Halford, obviously. So he's like me. I'm Ch I'm C. B. Deneen, but obviously everyone knows me as Bernard, and obviously J. B. Halford is better known as. So we do have um, some simil similarities. But it, um, just a little little column called First Impressions, I'll just read from it. One of the questions people keep asking me since I joined City in March, so I only joined in March um, 73, March 73, what are your impressions of the First Division or is there much difference here from Oldham? So he came from Oldham. Since coming to Main Road I found the atmosphere tremendous, the club has a very personal outlook and we have such great potential. The help and assistance which I have received from the directors and staff have made this easier. For me to settle down and have spent a lot of time examining the ways to improve upon the administration of the club. I would like to take this opportunity of thanking all the people who assisted me in my initial period of baptism. In my 13 years at Oldham I have made a large number of friends and had experience in most aspects of organising a football club. During my stay there I served on the supporters club committee for a number of years and enjoyed helping in organising the fundraising activities. 
I have always felt that a good supporters club is an essential part of a football club and can give valuable assistance in promoting a good relationship between the parent body and its supporters. At the present time, I have already attended several functions which have been organised by our supporters clubs and I feel that my relationship then will grow from strength to strength as time goes by. One of the main things that impressed me is that I think we have a wonderful social club at Main Road. We did, wonderful place. The entertainment provided and the atmosphere in there must be second to none in the Football League. I am now making preparations for the new season, which I'm sure we will hope are a highly successful one for us. And I look forward to a long and happy stay at Main Road. Well, Bernard, Bernard, you just certainly have a long and happy stay at Main Road. That was uh, just a little bit from Bernard Halford and the supporters. But there, uh, there was actually... Um, piece on Harry Godwin. Harry Godwin used to be the youth team, used to be the chief scout for City. Harry Godwin. I think this was deemed to be his last season. I don't know if he did retire or not. He was going to retire in November, so I assume he did. But interesting enough, it's just a list of the players he, he came across as um, chief scout for City. And he got he said in the, in the article, in all modesty, I think I've earned me, my keep and enlisted the undermentioned player that I've personally signed or greatly assisted in signing for Manchester City. I leave you in judgment, and he, he rolls off the name. So we've got Harry Dow, Joe Corrigan, Peter Miller, Ronnie Healy, David Connor, Cliff Sear, Roy Cheatham, David Shawcross, Phil Burrows, Paul Ameson, Alan Kirkman, John Benson, Alf Wood, Neil Young, David Wagstaff, Bobby Conley, Stan Bowles, Willie Donicky, Mike Doyle, Tommy Boob, Alan Oates, Glyn Pardo, Chris Jones, Derek Jeffries, Tony Towers, Colin Barrett, Ian Miller, Mike Brennan, Ian Bowyer. And Jeff Johnson, I mean, some some better known than others, but uh, yeah, I mean, Harry Godwin did have a a good, uh, not a, not a bad track record, isn't it? And it, it's interesting they got a, a, a an image, um, a footballing first for Manchester City. The second team trainer and youth coach David Ewing holds up the Lancashire FA Professional Youth Cup. The boys Blues won after beating rivals Manchester United in the two-legged final. It was the first time a City youth team had won at a competition at this level in this country. Their only other youth success was an international club tournament in West Germany when the present team players like Def Derek Jeffries, Tony Towers, Tommy Boo and Ronnie Healy were playing at that level. But it's a, just a picture of this youth team, obviously, from, from that time. And I mean, God, I mean, I can see a young Peter Barnes up there at the top. Can you see that, young Peter Barnes? But I'm a, a bit stuck on some of the other players. I mean, if you can think of uh, any names of any of those guys. But uh, how old do they look for a youth team? <laughs> they look a bit old, mid-20s, don't they? It just amazes me how, how old they do look. Um, but a fantastic image of that uh, youth team there. And it was inter it's interesting that um, Bill Fryer wrote about... Um, uh, Harry Godwin as well, and he was commenting about you know this time of bungs and giving young players and trying to do things, giving backdoor payments. I mean, you just mentioned obviously in this, uh, you see he starts a column, Bill Fryer from the Daily Express. There is no better judge of a boy player than Harry Godwin, City's chief scout. Nor is there a better judge once he's decided the lad is the right potential of a boy player's taste in toffees. As it so happens, Harry always has a bag of sweets in his pocket. Well, during a friendship that's extended from the days he scouted for Wrexham and then Bury before his 23 years with City, I've never seen him eat one. So, an interesting, <laughs> an interesting thing and a bit scary at the time, isn't it? But he had a little bag of sweets for the kids. You know, would like to sign for City, young man. So, it's just, just made me laugh when I, when I read that. Different times, obviously different times. Uh, you got a great oh man tax. I remember Matt and I used to use man tax quite a lot. Man tax taxes are they still? I don't know they're still going. I used to use them when I was uh, obviously in my teenage years and early twenties. Used to use man tax quite a lot to get to Manchester from Rotters Club, Rotters Disco, places like that. A great picture of a game versus um, Stoke City and uh, Mike Summerby uh, obviously sending a goal. Uh, well, a shot goalward. It's a great image again with the kit back. It's always good to have the kit backs in the background, isn't it, as well? And there's another one with a Mike Doyle. They're obviously, Rodney Marsh is ready, ready to pass, but the great Jim Montgomery of Sunderland. You remember that cup final against Leeds? Absolutely fantastic double save he made. Superb. But uh, obviously, that's uh, some great little action pictures from the from the early 70s. And another one of Mike Summerby against Arsenal. But do you know the goalkeeper? Do you know who the goalkeeper is? I'll tell you. I'll tell you after this. Yeah. So obviously the 
a piece on Johnny Hart by um, George Morton, um, obviously in the, in the thing as well. Uh, little story, little little column on Johnny Hart as now the permanent manager, obviously of Manchester City, with image of Joe Corrigan. And the qualities for Joe Hart, he did say, as a disciplinarian, he told the players in no uncertain manner, "You are no use to me when under suspension." This after a spate of bookings and suspensions had left the City disciplinary image severely tarnished. Explained Hart, I feel strongly about discipline. There is no question of picking on individuals. The team as a whole is involved. As a morale builder, the team was heading for relegation in four successive defeats. So he's talking about the season before. Three of them at home and when he took over. He spoke to the players about their duty to the club, to the fans, to themselves. As a match winner, his record, 10 points from seven games. So, seven games, it wasn't fantastic, but it was only two points for a, for a win, don't forget. So, 10 points from seven games doesn't sound great, but it was pretty good stuff. As a diplomat, he continued to pick controversial star Rodney Marsh for first team duty. Marsh was still officially on the transfer list, but Hart's actions showed he bore the player no grudge. In fact, it possibly wormed out of an unhappy player 100% effort in the closing games. And he goes on to say, Hail Johnny Hart, fighter supreme, and on current form, a manager to watch. Obviously, if you, if you do know anything about John, Johnny Hart, you know how that, um, I did call him Joe Hart in part one of this briefly, but I did, did correct myself, but some, you know, I did get back to Johnny Hart, so my apologies. It's no relation, obviously. Um, another picture of who's this one now? Um, Mike Summerby again, a bit, his hair's a bit longer than I, I remembered him there against Arsenal. Interesting. Another picture of another player. Can you know who this is? I mean, I don't. I don't think you need to guess who that is. Great player. He used to used to get a roar from the Kipax when he started off on a on a, on a run. That player, fantastic. And there's a fixture list there of the games that season. Obviously, we're looking at the 73, 74 a Birmingham City home game. I, re I remember that game really well because the Birmingham fans got into the Kipax very early, and I was obviously to say I was 14. And the man run upstairs and thought, oh God, so much wrong here. And it was, they were Birmingham City fans singing City. It was like, I used to get in quite early for some reason in the Kipax, uh, about an hour and a half, obviously when the gates opened. But all the Birmingham fans were singing City. I mean, there weren't many of them around by kickoff. Obviously, uh, once the City fans had arrived, obviously they were put in the place. But uh, yeah, it was, it was quite a funny occasion. And not noticeably, uh, the last game, the last game of the season, Manchester United, it did end up obviously... And that was going to be the infamous, obviously, Dennis Law, or famous or infamous, whichever way you look at it, Dennis Law back heel, wasn't it? So that was this season, that was the 73-74 season. And you got Roy Hall Cash and Carry. He used to shop there when I had a little video shop. He used to get all my stuff from Roy Hall's. He used to have a, an account at Roy Hall's Cash and Carry. I think it's still there. Um, um, who's a player of the year? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say a little bit about him. Who, who's a 72, 73 player of the year? Can you have a guess at who got our player of the year? If I just uh, a couple of things about him, the, uh, I'll, I'll leave. I'll try and leave his name out. That magical quality. This is James Mossett from the Sunday Express. That magical quality which separates from the rest of his profession can be contained in one word: character. It covers courage, humour, honesty, tenacity, and a sack full of reasons why. The man is Manchester City's Player of the Year and my player for all seasons. His father was one of those fine old school professionals. He died a few years ago quite young but I still, still see a lot of him in his son. His courage is talked about from footballers up and down the land. Shortly before he won his first England cap, Jackie Charlton was sat alongside Sir Alf Ramsey at a London banquet. The talk was about wingers and the shortage of them. Jack stabbed a finger in Sir Alf's side and said, you must cap. He is the only winger I know who will battle through to the end, even if he's getting kicked to death. He is more gutsy than any other forward I have ever met. Sir Alf captain soon after. So who we were talking about, that's quite an easy one. There's a few clues in there to, to tell you who we're talking about, I think, there. Uh, to finish off a great, another action picture with the wonderful Tommy Boo. With, the game, with that Birmingham game, uh, obviously that was the season before against Birmingham. We talked about the Birmingham game, but obviously that's the season before. Great image of Tommy Boo. John Brown, bookmaker. I don't remember John Brown. And of course, at the end, at the back of the book, the, the ever-reliable City Social Club guys. Obviously, uh, Green or Whitley, wasn't it? So there you go with that... Uh, Quick look at the second part two of the official handbook. What what did they ask you? Some um, some questions on players, etc. Let's have a look back at those players. Yeah, I mean the player 
up against Wolves there. That's, that was Ian Mellor. Yeah, Ian Mellor. Remember, remember Ian Mellor, uh, the goalkeeper. I think we've got one for a goalkeeper, haven't we, against... Um, Is it Summerby? Let's find that one. The goalkeeper. You probably knew who that was anyway, didn't you? You probably recognise that goalkeeper, very well, very well known goalkeeper against Mike Summerby. Yeah, of course we're talking uh, some fantastic. He did he match of the day, or didn't he as well? Uh, we're talking Bob Wilson, obviously of Arsenal, then a legend, a legendary goalkeeper. Easy, easy to name the players, isn't it? Willie Donicky, I'm sure you all got Willie Donicky. That shirt, fantastic shirt, wasn't it? I'm sure we got Will Donicky, Willie Donicky. And of course, the player of the year that we were talking about from uh, 72, 73, of course, was Mike Summerby. You know, that was the winger and that little comment about the from the journalist about Sir Ralph. He didn't play many times for England, did he? Only had a hand, I don't think he, I'm not sure off hand. He's probably between five and ten games, I'm not too sure. Um, should have played a lot more, I think, but uh, we did have quite a lot of talent in the English team at that, you know, and the, the English ranks at that time. So that was great. It's just great to look back through that. But I hope you enjoyed that. Part two of the look of uh, Manchester City FC supporters club official handbook 73, 74. Do something similar in the near in the uh, near future. Please um, follow me on Twitter for all the latest City news. If you're into movie vlogs or TV dramas, um, please uh, they're in the playlist below. I do a little vlogs on that. So if you're into, into your movies and TV dramas, please um, join me for some reviews and information on stuff like that as well. But you can follow me on Twitter at Charles Deneen, Deneen spelled D-I-N-N-E-N, or at Nostalgia underscore Movie. Both accounts are linked, so you can follow both or either. It's, it's fine. I mean, I, I usually post items on both anyway. And I'm on Facebook at the Deneen with links to MovieGameNostalgia.com, my little website for uh, old rare DVDs, uh, movie posters from the 90s and 2000s, and... Um, older board games, Waddington's Park as MV games, stuff like that. So if you can find time to have a look at moviegamenostalgia.com, much appreciated if after any sort of gift ideas and you love movies and you love posters, etc. Please uh, please have a look on there. I'll give you a thumbs up for that anyway. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please, if you're still with me, leave that thumbs up. It's nice to get viewers. It's nice to get thumbs ups as well. Get the thumbs up percentages up. And thank you very much for joining me for this little look back at uh, it's 19... Between 1972 and 74, wasn't it? I mean, there's a lot of stuff from 72, 73, even though we're looking forward to a 73, 74 season, which quite didn't quite live up to expectations off and on the pitch. Um, unfortunately, we got so we got close to getting a trophy that year, but not quite. But obviously, if you watch the vlogs and you know your city history, you'll know all about 1973, 74, and what did and what didn't happen, including the famous back heel, obviously, including the trip down south again, which has become pretty regular now but wasn't perhaps then again at this that, that time last year last last um, in 73 74 we have been a few times you know i've been two or three times so it wasn't unusual anyway thanks for watching this we're going to do the next day have a great one look after yourselves look after your friends more important look after all your family and please oh, let's all look after each other and uh, we'll get through everything eh? one way or the other anyway this is burn saying thanks for watching hopefully i'll see you all again very soon